We're going to go to Daniel chapter 1, verse 1 here, okay? And I'm going to go ahead, if you have your Bibles this morning, open your Bibles to uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 1, all right? And we will go ahead and read on through Daniel chapter 1. I'm going to start in verse 1. I'm just going to read the whole chapter. The whole chapter just kind of flows with the, with the same theme, and then we will... Move on from there. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with the part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. The king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel in the king's seed of the princes. Children in whom were have no blemish, okay, he's talking about bring the, the, uh, the chosen royal children, okay, of the land, okay, bring, bring those that were the, uh, the, uh, the smart and healthy, strong children, okay, children in whom there was no blemish, but they were well favored, skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science, and such as had the ability in them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. The king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah. It was Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Balthazar, Hananiah, Shadrach, Mishael, Meshach, and Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and with tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. The prince of the eunuchs said unto Daniel, I fear my lord the king who hath appointed your meat and your drink, for why should he see your faces worse like him than the children which are of a sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Prove or test the servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse or seeds of a certain kind to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, the countenance of children, that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and thou seest deal with thy servants." So he consented to them in this matter and proved them ten days. At the end of ten days their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat of portions of the king's meat. Thus Melzar took away the portion of their meat, the wine that they should drink, and gave them pulse. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and learning and wisdom. Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. The king communed with them. Among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. All the matters of wisdom and understanding, and the king inquired of them. He found them ten times better than all the musicians and astrologers that were in, them, that were in their realm. Daniel continued even the first year of the king Cyrus. Okay, so here we go. Back up in verse 1, 2, and 3, we've got in the, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah came, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to Jerusalem and besieged it. He overtook it. The Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, which parted the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasures, unto the house of God. The king would speak, Okay, and he would say, you know, bring me certain of the children of Israel, bring me chosen children of Israel that are very wise, that are very understanding, that are very understanding and, and ability to, to understand much knowledge, that, that can learn very quickly, that are smart, that are healthy. Bring those children to me, the king. I want them, I want to train them up. In our way of living, which was not the which was not the Lord God's way of living by any means. 
But this king desired these children to be brought to him and to where he would train a certain group of the children of Israel in the ways that he wanted them to be trained. Okay, the land was overtaken at this time. Daniel and his friends, okay, Daniel and his friends would be amongst those that were chosen. Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You know them today, okay, as, as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And Daniel, and you probably, uh, those of you who are believers here this morning, which is most of you, you early on in your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ probably cut your teeth on Daniel, okay? The story of Daniel in the lion's den and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, okay? And you, 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 you cut your teeth on these stories early on in your Christian life, okay? You probably colored little pictures of, of Daniel in the lion's den. You probably colored pictures of, of them in the fiery furnace or whatever it may be. This is a passage of Scripture, a book of Scripture that has been taken and has been used for the glory of Christ, but at times been used not well in the sense of scriptural, you know, a lot of research was left behind because at one instance, and we'll, and we'll move on, the thing I find out interesting that, and this is a very important point is what I, is what I was thinking about this, this past week is uh, when you study God's word, be very careful that you study God's word in its totality. Be, be very careful that you don't listen to what just somebody says and take it as, as, as gospel truth, because a lot of what you read about Daniel, he, he found himself in the lion's den as a very young man, and he found himself in the lion's den, okay, she has pictures of him as, as, as very young, but in, 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 in truth, he wasn't young, in truth, he was, he was in his 80s when he, when he, when he hit the lion's den, so that's just one instance of, uh, understanding the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ, digging into it deeper instead of in a superficial way. Daniel was trained in the understanding of Scripture, of the Old Testament. Him and those around him, they were trained uh, in the understanding of Scripture. They were trained in, in understanding that, that their minds and hearts need to be focused on the Lord Jesus Christ, or on the Lord God. And, and their land would be overtaken. Their land would be overtaken. Israel would be overtaken. It would, it would be captured. They would be captured. They would be, they would be taken away. They would be taken hostage, and they would be used by the enemy. But now the point comes in Daniel's young life, okay? He was in his teens, all right? And the point comes in his life and, and to where he's got to make a choice, okay? Daniel has to make a choice, and the, and, and, and the choice is very simple, okay? What is he going to do now that he has been taken by the enemy? What is he going to do? How is he going to respond to this? Is he going to live an uncompromised life and stay true to the word of God? Or is he going to compromise? He's been taken by the enemy. He's been captured by the enemy. Taken from his family. Probably never to see his family again. Was he going to remain a man of integrity? Was he going to remain a young man of character? And eventually an old man of integrity and character. Was he going to remain that way? Was he going to remain a man, a young man who trusted in God? Who didn't sway? Who didn't, who didn't allow those around him to sway him? Was he, was he going to remain a, a man of such character, such, such faith, such integrity, such focus on the Lord Jesus or on the, on the Lord God, okay? Was he going to remain that man, that young man? Was he going to remain that man that he has been called to be? Was he going to live the uncompromising life to the Lord God? Okay, was he going to stay focused that way? Was that how his life was going to be? See, the truth is the Christian world is, is littered with those Christians who never remained faithful who somewhere along the line in their Christian walk compromised. 
Daniel would be taken to a land that was completely against the Lord God. That believed in a complete different way. That had many different beliefs. The influence would be there. It would be ripe. It would be powerful. It would be very influential in this young man's life and those around him okay, that were taken from Israel. It would be very influential in their lives. It would be very, very influential in Daniel's life. The temptation would be there to what? To compromise. To compromise. To just go with the flow. And we'll see this morning as we look in the first chapter of, of, of Daniel, he would be immediately faced with a dilemma. Would he stay true to the law of his God? Or would he go to the law, if you will, of the enemy? He would come to a fork in the road. Which way is, is he going to go? You and I learn, learn it early and we learn it and we learn it often, okay? Compromise. We learn it early and we, we learn it often. You'll learn it early. You'll learn it often in your, in your walk with Christ. And some of you have been saved for many, many years. In, in, a, a child in his everyday running a mill life, a, a young person in their everyday running a mill life, even those that are not of the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, compromise is, is, is just part of life. It's part of the everyday life. It's part of the time. And you, you will learn about compromise in work. You will learn about compromise in friendships. You will learn about compromise in, in relationships. You will learn about compromise in worship. It will express itself in music. It will express itself in, in daily living. It will express itself in prayer. It will express itself in school. It, it, and ultimately when it comes to the church... Compromise within the church finds its roots, okay? It finds its roots in weak theology. It finds its roots in weak theology. If you're not careful in your life as a believer, listen to me. If you are not careful in your life as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will become an expert at compromise. You'll become an expert at it. You'll learn it well. You'll learn its ins and its outs very well. You will become schooled in it. You will know how to use it. You'll become an expert at the very thing that is against the Lord Jesus Christ. Compromise. And like I said before just a few minutes ago, compromise comes from weak theology. It comes from weak study. Daniel was trained in the understanding of the Word of God. If you go into the New Testament, okay, if, if you go into the New Testament, you'll see another young man in the New Testament, we've looked at him many, many different times in church, is, is Timothy. Very young. A few years older than what Daniel is right now in Daniel chapter 1. But Timothy, okay, was trained in the understanding of Scripture from his mother and his grandmother, Louise and Eunice, was trained in the understanding of Scripture. And then was trained in the understanding of Scripture through Paul. He would, he would, he would be faced early on in his life with the word compromise. Same thing as Daniel, compromise. A saint, an older saint, in the latter days of his life, said this. If I had to do it all over again, I would pray less and I would study more. The older saint said, if I had to do it all over again, as I'm winding down my service for the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, if I had to do it all over again, I would, I would pray less and I would study more. I would take in the truth more. Because he knew he understood that the, that the study, that the understanding of, 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 of Scripture teaches and guides and leads us in the understanding of what it is to, to, 
to pray and to, and to understand what the Lord Jesus Christ wills for us. Turn to Psalm real quick if you have your Bible. Psalm 138 verse, verse 2. In Psalm 138 verse, verse 2, let me show you what it has to say in Psalm 138 verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness, for thy truth, and for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. David says, it's your word, Lord. It's your word that is to be magnified, right? It's your word that is to be, that is to be lifted up. It's your words that are to be magnified. It's your words. It's your words that are backed by your name. It's your words. It's your words. It's your, it's your words that you give us. It's your understanding of Scripture that you give us that keep us from living a compromised life. It's your teachings. Why do we think the Apostle Paul so much in the New Testament was so adamant about teaching Men and women and children, the truth. Because he understood the power that resides in the word of God. Especially when it comes to daily living. Especially when it comes to worship. Especially when it comes to the glorification of Christ. When it comes to, to fall into temptation of compromise. He understood that. He got that. The problem with so many in church today is, is, oh, we compromise so easy, don't we? We compromise so easy. We willingly give in so easy. Just to keep the peace, just to keep the flow, if you will. Just to keep ha people happy in the church. Leadership, church leadership does it all the time. When things, and, uh, things are to be addressed and, and to be dealt with according to Scripture, church leadership will, will cave in and, 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 and not deal with it according to Scripture, but they'll deal with it according to the opinions of man. Daniel would be faced with an issue. Do I partake of the food? that's given by the enemy, that's not of the law of Moses, that's not according to, to Old Testament teachings, it's not according to Old Testament scriptures, do I partake in that? Or, or, or do I live according and trust in my God and live according to what He wills and let the cards fall will they may? Do I do that or do I compromise and go towards what the enemy wills? What do I do? He compromises the refusal to do what God commands of us or requires of us. To do what we want. To do what, how we want it to be done. It's a study of His Word. It's a study of this, this, this book. This, it's a study of His Word that helps you to, to pray. It's a study of this Word that strengthens you against compromise. You're going to compromise sometime this week. Your faith. Guaranteed. I shouldn't say you're going to compromise, but I should say you're going to, you're going to be faced with an opportunity to compromise sometime this week. Guaranteed. You're going to be faced with the opportunity to do. The, cho the difference is, is, is the choice is going to be yours. Will you compromise the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or will you not? Remember, Daniel was very young. He was very young in his faith. Very young in his, young in his, own, in, in, in his, in, in his understanding. He was a young man. The temptations most certainly would have been there. To just cave in, Right? Just do what everybody else is doing. Boy, that's a popular theme today, isn't it? 
Especially when we understand the world doing what everybody else is doing. I understand the world doing what everybody else is doing. That don't shock me a bit. I don't, I'm not blown away by that at all. But what shocks us is when the church is doing what everybody else is doing. When the church is looking more and more like the world. Why? Compromise. They compromise. They give in. Let's do what the world does. Let's do what so-and-so is doing down the street. If, it, if, it, if it's showing any type of results, it might be good, right? It should, it's probably good right now. There's many religions that are false that are showing some sort of result. But it's not biblical results. Like in Daniel chapter 1, verse... Uh, Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. This is what Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 says. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. See, Daniel refused to eat food against the law of Moses. He purposed in his heart. He refused to compromise. Remember, <laughs> God's only 13 to 15 years old. He refused to. He said, no, he said, he said, I'm going to stick to what my God commands. What my God says. What my God desires. What my God wants, I'm going to stick to that and not to what the world wants. This is what James chapter 4 verse 17 says. To him that knoweth to do good and does it not, to him it's sin. James is saying, listen, If you know to do good and you refuse to do it, to you it's sin. You've sinned. You went against the truth. You neglected your duty as a believer. And you went against the truth. You compromised the truth. You've compromised the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. You've chose a different path. You thought, ah, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's just one little sin. Oh, we've all heard it's the one little sin that put Christ on the cross, right? We understand that. We get that. Be careful how you approach sin. Be careful how you approach compromise. Be careful how you approach your everyday service for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be careful how you do that. Daniel says in verse 8, it says that he purposed in his heart. He, he wondered in his heart. He mauled it over in his heart, right? He mauled it over. He determined in his heart after he mauled it over that he was not going to defile his God. He's not going to do that. To him, he purposed, he determined after he mauled it over that he was not going to defile his God. To him, that was unthinkable. It would never happen. See, that's the difference between somebody whose mind is hard is so saturated with the things of God and somebody whose mind and heart is not so saturated with the things of God. I can, I mean, I'm, I'm, don't take this wrong, but I can look at a believer and you could look at a believer you can do the same thing. And you can watch their life. 
how they live. And you can tell pretty quick the depth of their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not hard. You can tell really quick by how somebody lives how serious they take their walk with Christ. How serious that they take their privilege of studying God's Word. Just watch how they live. Just watch how they live. You're sitting there this morning and you're saying to yourself, my life is, I'm a believer, but I, I, I find myself in, I find myself I find myself in, 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 in the world. I find myself in world activities. I find myself in worldly doings. I find myself all about the world. The reason is, is because you take a complacent look of Scripture. You take a complacent look unto Scripture. You take a complacent look unto who the Lord Jesus Christ is. See, Daniel, if he took a complacent look, there's no way we would be reading this right now. We would be reading something completely different. His worship was not complacent. His worship was not just a here, a little, here, a little bit here, a little bit there, just come and go. That wasn't his worship. You can tell it wasn't his worship. I mean, this young man knew. He knew what the repercussions would be. He knew what the chances of the repercussions would be. Hey, I mean, I, I, I might not live long. If I do what I'm going to do. But he stood strong in the truth. He refused to compromise. Therefore he requests of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. The Lord God is already in His sovereignty, in His, in His mercy, is already, He's paved the way, if you will, for Daniel. He, he, he's paved the way. The plan for Daniel has been, has been already cut out. Prince of the eunuch says unto Daniel, I fear my Lord the King, he says. His response was, hey, I fear my King, Who hath to point at your meat and your drink? For why should he see your faces worse likened than the children which are of your sword? In other words, I fear my king. If, if, if I don't make you eat and drink what he gave me to me for, for you to eat and drink, and you get skinny and, and all frail looking in 10 days, I fear that I will lose my head. I fear that I will die. What he says in, at the end of verse 10, Then shall you make me endanger my head to the king? If you do this, do you not know, Daniel, that you're not only going to endanger yourself, you're not only going to endanger your friends around you, but you're going to endanger me. Let's get, to, let's get to the meat of the subject here. Okay, the guy says, listen, you're going to endanger me. You will only can have your head chopped off, but I'm worried about my own head in this deal. Then said Daniel to Melzar, whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Test us. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days. And let, this, let, us, let them give us pulse to eat, or seeds of a certain kind, vegetables of a certain kind, and water to drink. Then let our countenances be looked upon before thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king and me, and thou seest, deal with thy servants. And then we, you deal with us as you will. Let me prove to you. Let me prove to you. Daniel was a man, was a young man of utmost faith. He was a, 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 a young man of utmost faith. A young man, a young woman, an older man, an older woman, a child of much faith. They are powerful tools in the hand of God. You take a man or a woman or a child, strong faith. 
They are powerful tools in the hand of God. Very powerful tools. Turn to Proverbs real quick. Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs 21. Verse uh, 2131. Verse 31. 2131 in Proverbs, okay? Listen to what it says. The horse is always or is prepared against the day of battle. But safety is always and always will be of the Lord. Again, the horse will be prepared against the day of battle. But the safety, but the guidance will be of the Lord. What do you mean? Before the horse goes into battle, new shoes will be put on. The saddle will be tightened down. The weaponry will be strapped across its back. Its shield will be put on its face if it has one. I don't know. It'll be prepared. It'll prepare. It'll be prepared by somebody for battle. But its safety, its guidance, will always rest in the hand of God. Now, same thing for us. Isn't it? When we go to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, we must prepare ourselves, right? We must prepare ourselves by study. We must prepare ourselves by seeking the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must prepare ourselves in deep communion of God's Word. Prepare our minds and our hearts for the battle. Because the forks in the road will come, will they not? They will come. The opportunities will come. The opportunities will come. The opportunities will, will, will present themselves. They'll present themselves to, to, to cause us division. They'll present themselves to, to cause us times where we slip up and, and compromise. But listen, as Proverbs says, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is always in of the Lord. It always rests in the Lord. Safety always rests in Him. Daniel was a man of utmost faith. Again, a powerful tool in the hand of God. He stood strong in the face of this trial. Immediately, he's faced with a trial. Immediately, he's faced with this trial. Do I partake of this food and drink or do I not? Do I compromise or do I not? Do I give in or do I not? His age meant nothing. Again, we you can look at you can look at young Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 14. He was a very young man, never too young to be faithful, never too young to be truthful to the word of God. Psalm 92 verse 14, never too old to be faithful, never too old to be focused on the word of God. Never too old, never too young. Man, Daniel was 13 to 15 years old and immediately this hits him. So we read on down in verse 14. So he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. And at the end of 10 days, their countenances appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat of the portions of the king's meat. Why is this? Remember back up to verse, verse, verse 9. There was much favor on Daniel. There was much favor on him. God's sovereignty on display. There was much favor and mercy on him by the Lord God. 
And Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them this pulse or these vegetables, these seeds of a certain kind. And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring in them, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in and before Nebuchadnezzar and the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel. None was found like Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. There was none that was like them. Wow. None would be found like them. None would be found like Daniel. A young, can you imagine today a 13 to 15 year old young man with such faith, with such determination, with such desire to follow the things of Christ? Could you imagine that? But it's just as then it was possible many years ago, today it is possible. Again, powerful tools in the hands of God. Those that are faithful, those that refuse to compromise. Look at your life. Are you a compromising believer? If you are a compromising believer, listen to me. If you are a compromising believer, there's very little work you can do. For Christ because you compromise you give in you give in you give in you give in to the things of the world Daniel would be taken to a land where there would be he would be taken to a people as we know in verse 20 there would be there would be magicians there would be astrologers there would be there would be uh, different religions different people that believed in different things there was so much an agglomeration of so much would be lumped together and the, and the opportunity to compromise would present itself day in and day out but he would remain faithful he would remain faithful to the truth times will come in your life as a Christian And you're going to have to make a choice. You're just going to have to. Do I compromise my beliefs in the Lord God or do I not? Be forks in a road. It'll come. Christian, beware. The more you seek to serve the Lord Jesus Christ, the more opportunities of compromise will come knocking at your door. The more the enemy will put opportunities for you to compromise in front of you. The more the enemy will put opportunities of compromise in front of you. He'll, he'll put opportunities of, of compromise more and more in front of you to try and derail you in the faith. To try to trip you up. To try to keep you from being a man or a woman of integrity. To try to keep you from being a man or a woman of character. A man or a woman of, of, of great strength. Not strength in of yourself, but, but just simply of, of great spiritual strength that was, that was given to you by the Lord God. A man or a woman of trust. Joshua 1.9 have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee where, wherever you go. Lord God, and, and Joshua says, listen, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Do you not think Daniel, I mean, Daniel was a little bit dismayed. I'm sure he was. He's taken from his family. But he knew the promise. Wherever you go. I'll be there with you. I'll never leave you. Wherever you go, I'll be there. Wherever you go, I'm there. Wherever you go, I am clearing the paths. Again, in Daniel's life, the paths were cleared, were they not? He cleared the paths. The, the, the head, the, 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 the leader of the eunuchs, he, 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 the Lord God gave him a heart for Daniel. The path has been cleared. Daniel, don't compromise. I have the path clear. Stay true to me. Mm -hmm. I have this. 
like I said before, our problem is in our in our lives as believers is for so many Christians is their weak understanding of Scripture produces many, many times a failure and compromise. It always does go back to Scripture. It always finds its way back there. Like I said before, Paul's emphasis of the understanding of Scripture was so important. He understood it. Again, just like the old saint of yesterday said, if I had to do it all over again, I would pray less and I would study more. He knew the power of understanding Scripture because this Word that is living and active teaches you to pray correctly. You rest in its truth because it's living, it's active, it's powerful. And Daniel was learning to rest in this very living word of God. So as we close this, this morning, look at your life as a believer are you one who compromises? Are you one who willingly compromises? Are you one that the average person would not tell you apart from those of the world? Let me tell you something. If you're a believer and a stranger cannot tell you apart by your actions from the world, you have got a serious issue to deal with, spiritually speaking. You've got a huge issue to deal with. And according to Scripture, you better deal with it. Because it won't be long before you'll start to suffer the consequences for your actions. Daniel would hold strong to the faith. He would hold strong to the truth. He would spend many, 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 many years in the land of the enemy. For that's where the Lord God will for him to be. Remember, contrary to what the pictures show of Daniel in the lion's den as a real young man, no, 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 no. He was in his 80s by that time, which meant for many, many years he stood true to the faith and kept his eyes on his God, let us pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you, Lord, for all that you do. And may we keep our eyes on you. Yes. You're a holy God, Lord. You are, you're righteous. And Lord, uh, these prayer requests that we mentioned here this morning and those that we didn't mention, Lord, uh, thought about one before, continue to pray for it. We continue to pray for Tracy and this uh, this work and how it's this work changed and how it's affecting him and, and, and others that do similar occupations like he does and, uh, and just we just pray for him Lord and for direction in, in his life and a touch there we love you and we and we thank you and we glorify you Lord and father just just touch bass Chapel and build us in according to your direct will and your will. We're not called to build the church. You are, and it's your it's your it's your will. You build the church. And you say, I'll build the church. We just plant and water the seed. You'll build the church. Remind us of that. And and we love you and we thank you for all that you do. Use us for your glory and your honor. We thank you for it's in your name we pray. Amen. One thing before I close while I'm thinking about it. Uh as far as the worship part of tithes and offerings, okay, uh, Justin's going to be posting today. He might have already posted, all right, as far as the tithes and offering worship part. He'll post the address to the church. So if you want to send your tithes and offerings that way to the address and Christy, who's, you know, uh, who's the treasurer, she'll be, she'll be picking them up. She'll be checking uh, pretty much daily or something, the mailbox to make sure that, that's taken care of okay uh, so 
if you want to do that, fine. I know I will be doing it because I, I feel a whole lot better doing it weekly than I do sending off if, if this thing moves on another four or five weeks, you know. So, but anyway, but uh, just have a blessed, blessed day, okay? And we will uh, remember tonight it's at six o'clock, and we will continue to move through Scripture, and uh, we'll see where the Lord wills for us to go, okay? And we'll we will continue to worship Him. Love you. I miss you. Me and Tina both miss you guys, and uh, we miss everybody, and we, we can't wait to be back into the fellowship of, of believers in that way. But uh, until then, we will seek to do the Lord's will, and hey, uh, me and Tina were talking about it a couple days ago. Man, we've got it good, because boy, you look in Scripture, and when men and women suffered through hardships when it comes to worship the Lord, they had it a whole lot harder than we've got it, a whole lot. So go and serve your king. Go and serve your Lord. Have a blessed, blessed afternoon.